All right, so our next, our next task here is to calculate volume. Right? We took a look at a lot of surface area videos before this, but when we talk about volume, now we're really getting into a discussion of the stuff that's on the inside of our, of our solids. Right? So think about you know, how much liquid something can hold or how much air something can hold. Right? It's, a, it's a calculation of how much space is inside. And the calculation is super easy. It's length times width times height. All you want to do is multiply these three together. Makes no difference what uh, sort of order you put things in. Since it's all commutative, makes absolutely no difference. Or you can put them in any order. It also doesn't matter what you call length, width, or height. Let's do a few examples here and we'll see how this goes. So here we go. Volume is length times width times height. I'll call that L, I'll call that W, I'll call that H. And so here we go. 20 times 12 times 14. 20 times 12 times 14 is 3,360. And put the appropriate label. It's a cubic inch. And we're talking about space inside. All right, Volume is the amount of space inside. So if you wanted to fill this up with water, it would you would have to fill it with that much water. And we'll get into a few uh, real life examples in a little bit. So for this one, let's call this the height, that the length, and this is the width. Makes no difference which one you call L, which one you call W, or which one you call H. So this is 200. 200 square meters. Or, no, that's not right. Cubic meters. Oh boy. Cubic meters. That's how much space is on the inside. Or if you were to fill this with water, that's how much water you would need. Alright, so those are simple enough. But let's get into some more application problems, right? We have this problem where we're trying to compare which of these three storage units is the best value for our money. The small pod here uh, is a dollar is $150 a month. The medium one is $300 a month. And the large one is $350 a month. All right, and right here you can see the dimensions of each storage unit. So we're trying to figure out what's the best bang for our buck here. So what I want to do is just simply first find the volume of each one, and then we'll do a simple ratio. So here we go. The volume of, of the first one is, let's see, 2.1 times 2.1 times 2.4. So if we type that in, 2.1 squared times 2.4, we get 10.584 cubic meters. The middle one is, I'll put this in a different color here, is, let's see, it's 2.4 times 2.4 times 3.6. So put that all into your calculator, 2.4 squared times 3.6 is 20.736 cubic meters. And the last one, the largest one, is 2.4 times 2.4. We can just square that times 4.8. So 2.4 squared times 4.8, <clears throat> cubic meters. So clearly it's no surprise that the large pod has the most volume. But what is kind of interesting is to look at the comparisons between the two. Before we get into the price comparisons, just look at the huge difference there is between the small pod and the large pod, or the middle pod rather. It's almost twice as big. The medium pod's almost twice as big as the small pod is. And there's not much of a difference between large and medium. All right, when you actually go and order these things, maybe you're maybe you're moving or you're going to college or something, and you need a pod, uh, it's, you have to look at these things and see which one is the best value. Some of them might be kind of a ripoff. So let's see. To compare these, we want to think about how much money we are going to spend divided by how much volume we're getting. All right, this is called a simple ratio, just a comparison 
of values. So money over volume. Let's do the first one. Let's do the small pod first. So the small pod is going to be, let's see, money over volume. It's 150 over 10.584. And this ratio is going to give us, it's going to be a, uh, a ratio that will tell us how much, how many dollars it actually costs per cubic meter of volume. And this comes out, and this is dollars, 14.8. $14.17 per cubic meter. All right, so that's pretty good. The medium one, again, cost over volume is 300 over 20.736. So if we go 300 over 20.736, we get $14.47 per cubic meter. All right, so out of, the, out of these two, the small or the medium, I would rather pay $14.17 for every cubic meter than $14.47. It's not much of a difference, but I would rather pay this amount right here. Let's look at the large one, see if that's... Uh, see what that ratio is. We have 350 over 27.648. So 350 over 27.648 comes out to be, oh, this one's pretty good. This is $12.66 per cubic meter. So clearly, I think it's easy to see that the large pod is the best value the best uh, cubic space for your dollar right you're only paying you're paying less than thirteen dollars for uh, every single cubic meter but the worst value is actually the medium pod all right that's true of a lot of a lot of companies right they're gonna give you three options and you know depending on what you need in terms of space and you know how much money you have to spend it's worth spending a few seconds calculating the best value you can, this is something you can do right at the store or right at the uh, you know at the pod company you can just do it really quickly with a simple division uh, all right number four uh, number four is a fish tank all right so here we go we have let's see we've got a fish tank that is filled up three-fifths of the way all right, so three-fifths is what they're saying is three-fifths is 14, uh, 14 gallons, right? And the question is, what's the full capacity of our fish tank? So here we go. The volume of this thing is length times width times height. And they're saying that the fish tank is three-fifths full when there are 14 gallons in it. So three-fifths of the overall volume is 14 gallons. So three-fifths times V is 14. Well, simple algebra will tell you to get rid of a fraction as a coefficient. All you want to do is multiply both sides by the reciprocal. And what that's going to do is give you cancellations here so V is equal to 14 times 5 thirds. 14 times 5 thirds gives you 23.33 uh, uh, let's call it gallons. That would be the full capacity of the fish tank. Or you can check that to make sure that everything kind of fits together. Right, three-fifths of the whole thing should be 14 and when you check that it actually works out perfectly okay number five all right so this pool is 34 feet long 15 feet wide and 8 feet deep so if I were to draw a little picture of this it would look 
kind of like this. Something like this, where I've got 8, I've got 34, and I've got 15. All right, and this is all filled with water, or at least most of it is. So our job is to calculate, not necessarily volume, right? They're telling us that the uh, that you want to fill the pool to a height of 7.5 feet. So we're not going to fill the whole pool up. We're just going to fill it up to 7.5 feet. And water is being pumped in at a rate of 0.15 cubic feet per second. So water is going in here at 0.15 cubic feet every single second. So 0.15 is our rate every single second. That's our rate of fill. And how many hours will it take to reach the proper level? Okay, so first of all, let's think about what the proper level is. The proper level contains how many, how much water? Well, the proper level is going to be a volume question. It's going to be 15 times 34 times we don't want the whole thing, we don't want 8, but we want 7.5. That's going to be the proper level of our water. And that comes out to be 3,825 uh, cubic feet. Cubic feet. Alright, so that's how much we want to actually, that's how much water we want to put in the pool. Now, if we are pumping water in at a rate of 0.15 cubic feet every single second. That means that for um, our job is to figure out how many hours it will take to reach the proper level. Alright, so here's how we figure this out. We're going to take 38.25 and that is the uh, the number, or that's the total value, total volume that we're trying to fill up. And we're going to fill up 0.15 of those things every single second. So if we do a little division, you get that it's going to take that many seconds to fill up the whole pool. That's a lot. How many minutes is that? Well, we just divide that by 60 and we get 425 minutes. Question wants hours, so just divide that by another 60, since there are 60 minutes in an hour, and we get about 7.08 hours. And that's how much, how long it would take you to fill up the entire pool. So it's just about a full day, full day's work right there, of letting the pool fill up.